Hello everyone, this is Zahid from Inspire and Ignite and today I have an exciting thing to share with you because I am a computer science engineer and all of my relatives they know that I am a computer engineer so whenever I go to India and someone wants to buy a computer they usually come to me and ask like Zahid what kind of computer we should buy so I was like I just said like go, and go ahead and buy something which is nice I, I, I don't know much about it but recently what happened is like when I was rendering Inspire and Ignite videos I felt that the computer is so so super slow because it takes like five to six hours to render my my videos upon the old computer so when I was talking to one of my friends he said like it's time to change your computer I started doing some research and then finally I I have a new family member you can say we have a new family member for Inspire and Ignite so beautiful and you you are going to like it the most important thing is during that time i realized few things i did a lot of research on every single component because my requirements were very clear so i i bought one of the best components that could be available in the world and the market and overall when i showed it to my friends they all were amazed they liked it so so much so what i would like to share in this video is to help you out if you are if you are looking for for a computer a good computer for your home and you're confused most most of us are confused uh, when when we want to buy a computer or certain things so today i would like to show it to you what kind of research i have done and what kind of computer you can buy for yourself first let me show the computer yourself this is the beautiful computer i bought for i and i so we'll be doing a lot of uh, lot of rendering work into it. The basic thing is this time I took a reverse approach because uh, you know I usually used to buy things which are like truly good from inside. Like for example, my first computer I bought in engineering final year or third year or final year. So I concentrated upon the microprocessor and RAM. But this time I took a reverse approach and First, I did a lot of research upon the case itself, like what kind of case I have to buy and how it should look and, and what kind of things it should carry in it. So for me, it was very clear decision because I bought one of the best beautifully looking aluminum cases because aluminum give, give it like good thermal, uh, thermal efficiency so that the components can, can keep cool. And the next thing, the most important thing when you buy a computer, You'll have to look into processor, you'll have to look into the memory, you'll have to look into the board on which all these things are fitting and we call it motherboard and uh, the next important thing you'll have to consider is these days is GPU. What kind of graphic processing unit you want and uh, what kind of hard disk you're using. I don't use in this computer I don't use a normal ordinary hard disk drive I'm using SSD for operating system to make it a super fast computer, super fast and super quiet computer. And after all, like, you know, one of the most important thing I realized is we often neglect power supply, but I did a lot of research on power supply too. So overall, when you bring out every good component, you're going to make a good computer. For me, there were three major concerns when I was started buying the computer. The first thing is three, three main things I considered. The first thing is computer should be powerful enough to render the videos quickly and super fast. And the second thing is it should be super quiet. I really don't like any noise in my home. So I wanted a computer which is very, very quiet. And if I switch on, I should not know whether the computer is running or not. My home is very quiet. So I wanted it to be very quiet. And the third thing is I do parallel programming. So I wanted to have a GPU powerful enough GPU to realize the, to, uh, to make the difference between the, uh, between the performance of CPU and GPU. So these three things were very important for me. Then later, the obvious, the fundamentally obvious thing for me is the beauty. If I like something, I really like it. If I like it something from outside, I try to build it from inside. That, that's how my nature is. So what did I do is like I went to one of the one of the famous website and started following the people who who do a lot of computer research and our, 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 uh, unboxings and all that and try to find the best possible smallest quietest 
and thermal efficient uh, cabinet or a case for me and then I went to motherboard when you choose a motherboard you'll have to think about like every box every computer box don't have a similar motherboard into it because the small box need a small smaller motherboard and a bigger box you can fit any motherboard into it regarding motherboards I would like to say that uh, the bigger is the motherboard the expensive it is because when when the motherboard is bigger they add a lot of other components into it like PCI cards or some readers so it, it become more expensive my experience is I don't need all PCI cards I need only one 16 giga, giga, uh, gigabyte per second PCI card because I want to put um, only single graphic card into it and rest is like for me it's it's unimportant and the second important thing was for me was number of RAM slots number of memory I can put into it because you know the, the processor I bought it is i7 4 uh, i7 4770k processor so it has four cores and eight threads into it and it supports maximum memory of 32 GB RAM so what I wanted to do is like I want to have a small enough motherboard that have one or two PCI slots and have four RAM slots where I can put 8 GB 4 8 GB RAMs and uh, even if, if I don't want to put it now if I don't want to use all four four slots for RAM I just I'm just using two RAMs because I use 16 GB RAM for this computer at the end I will give the whole configuration of this computer so what I look for is I, I look for a small board that can fit into this cabinet and have one or two PCI slots and also have four RAM slots so that was my specification for for motherboard and most of the motherboards there are three famous companies for making motherboards one is ASRock another one is Gigabyte and another one is Asus so all these companies are from Taiwan and mostly they give uh, three years warranty so whatever that fits into your box and whatever that gives you the best performance you can buy that and the second thing what I was looking for is the processor processor was a big question for me because I wanted to buy a processor that is was powerful enough to render my videos quickly very fast so there were a lot of choices there are hexa core processors like six core processors are going there in the market these days but the issue with that for me is I'm just a normal user I'm not a super user or something and I'm not a gamer particularly I'm not a gamer so what was the issue with that was like I have to add additional cooling that can make computer a little noisy that's what I felt and and the price is price difference is too high like if I can make this computer in in hundred uh, in thousand dollars, that computer would take like maybe two thousand or two thousand five hundred dollars. The whole system itself, uh, build uh, the build of the whole system is different. What I was looking for is a small, compact, quite nice, nice thing. So I decided to go for like i seven four seven seven zero processor, which have four cores and have a very nice sensitive noise. Like if the, if the processor is hot, it, the fan will increase. And it will increase. I will tell something about France at the end. And then after that, I would have to. I had to select the GPU. I selected uh, GTX 660 Ti. The reason for that is it has 13,000, 1300 cores, 1300 SCUDA cores where I can program and check the performance on CPU and GPU how how it differs. So because I I was really looking for something which is which pro, uh, graphic card which have uh, the number of processors just more than thousand so I found an optimal price because if the memory transfer is 192 bit in uh, GTX 660 Ti so I bought it most of the most of the normal users who are like watching the video may, may not need a graphic card so how much memory how much RAM is needed for the computer is the another big question see I always want something which I can expand it later on I had a computer I bought it when I bought it it was it was supporting it it had only one GB RAM but later I added three more GB to it I used that computer for like six years it's super good computer but now it's it became so old that it made a lot of noise and uh, it, it, it hang it hangs sometimes when I render the video so what I would like to suggest to you is to buy if you're not a big gamer or a programmer or not using editing or something 8 GB RAM 8 GB RAM should be sufficient for you 
But if you want to put some extra money to increase up the speed and, and want to do some, some additional tasks, additional works, you can add it to 16 GB. But when you work, but I want you to have a board which is expandable to 32 GB because you know, memory rates are going down and sometimes later on you might feel like you might need more memory so you can put into that slots. So I think uh, have a provision for 32 GB RAM by a 16 GB RAM, that's the most optimal thing. When it comes to hard disk, I like quietness and speed. There is no other choice for me to go for, I mean, there is no other choice than going for SSD. So I, want, I went to SSD, SSD is actually, you know, 128 megabyte SSD, reads data at the rate of 500 megabytes per second and reads the data maybe like at the, at the rate of 500, uh, 500 megabytes per second. And, and the other normal ordinary hard disk, it usually reads like at the, at the rate of like, write at the rate of 100 and read at the rate of 200 or 250. So it is an obvious increase, increase in the speed. I wanted to use it so, and it's not very expensive. Like you put like 4,000 rupees or 100 bucks, you'll get like 128 GB of uh, SSD. 128 GB SSD is super enough for all your applications. What, what you can run on, on GPU and some, some other task you can do on that. So I think 128 GB is the best bet for having a reasonably good SSD. You can buy a hard disk and SSD both you can combine and you can use it. And what else I wanted to talk to you is like I talked about, uh, I talked about cabinet, I talked about uh, motherboard, I talked about GPU, I talked about memory. And now the thing left is, uh, Power supply. Power supply is the one of the most uh, one of the component that is most neglected because when when we go to a shop, we just say like power supply, and he will do he will buy some power supply and use it. But for me, this time I don't want to use that way. What did I do is like I checked what are the standards for power checking power supply. What what how a power supply is called a better power supply. There is a standard called eighty plus for that. So when I went to market, when I, before going to market, I did some research and I tried to find out like what kind of uh, power supply is better for, for the computer, how much my computer is needed and what is that what is saying 600 watt, what is, why is that 600 watt computer needed, why I need a power supply that can deliver 600 watt or 700 watt, 750 watts. Is it important that the number of, if, if I take higher watts, is it good or not? Lately, I realized that uh, higher number of watts are not important. Check out the components, how much how much power they need. Watts usually, the watts and the power supply usually represents the, you know, it represents the output of the maximum output from that power supply. So what, and it doesn't mean that it always uh, take input of 600 watt, it don't take it. Whatever your computer need, that, that many, that much uh, uh, electricity is being taken inside the power supply. So the most important thing is to calculate your components. My components would usually take 300 watt, 300 watts of energy. So what uh, what I did is like I bought uh, about uh, 600 watt power supply, which have three years warranty and have a uh, have a standard called 80 plus Brahms. 80 plus is like 80 percent of the time the power unit will give a constant uh, constant voltage. I mean, constant energy to the components. So it is a good indication and good check for the for the components, I mean, uh, for power supply. So whenever you, it gives a three, three years warranty and all those things are there. So what what is what was most important for me was like, it have a fan too. When we make the computer, the next important question, like my first requirement is finished. My two requirements are, it should look beautiful and it, ha it, should, it should be powerful enough and it should it should have a gpu so all these components are there my third requirement second or third requirement was like it should be quiet i need to make it as quiet as possible so uh, if you see this if you see this this is a very small body you know it's a very small computer so the thing is if I don't make the computer components cool, they might, I mean, they might go bad. So I need to pull them. 
So for what uh, for cooling usually we have fans in the computer. We have a fan and CPU. We have two fans and GPU. We have few fan. We have a fan and power supply. When you put all these fans in a small unit like this, what they will do is they will make a lot of noise. So my my lot of research went into fans itself. What kind of RPM is needed to cool down your com- to to cool down your CPU? How much RPM and uh, is needed to cool down your GPU? How much RPM is needed to make your power supply quiet? And how the air is in going inside the box and how the air is going outside the box. So this fan, remarkably, I'll try to say this: this this comp have seven fans inside. Seven fans. Four of them take the air in, and three of them take the air out of it. And uh, you can see here, air goes from here in, and it comes out out of here. So what did I do is like I try to research upon the fans, the the best fans available in the world, that that runs on high RPM, and uh, make less noise. Noise is all, all uh, always calculated in decibels. And you you can see dB. The lesser the dB is the better the noise performance. So I got the best fans. Now I I have this computer. You can see I will I will uh, you can see the configuration. So this is the most quiet computer I thought of making. The most prefer- powerful for my requirements and beautifully looking. Apart from this, I bought a 27-inch 4K monitor. It supports high resolution 4K, and I hope you are going to see a lot more videos because of it. Because the rendering is fast. Whenever I am ready to go to office, I'm just going to make videos out of it. With this, I think I I made a. I hope a lot of you to make a decision upon it. Don't go and buy every every component which is expensive in the market. Look into your requirements. If you want to make it beautiful, make it beautiful. If you want to make it really quiet, make it really, really quiet. Because I have seen some big, big cabinets with soundproof systems, and it, it's all nice. And it all depends on what you need and how much budget you have. Make a balance between them and buy the best thing available in the market on your budget. With this, I wish you a very good luck and have fun and keep computing. Thank you so much for watching the video. I would like to ask you to subscribe to Inspiring Guy because I'm going to add a few more videos related to like how to buy a nice car, how to buy a nice TV or, or anything nice. Anything nice I buy, I would like to make a video to to help you all to not to commit the mistakes I do while buying things and, uh, and keep doing uh, keep buying good stuff. Thank you so much for watching the video. Do subscribe to Inspiring Ignite for not only the buying videos, but for for more other videos upon your studies and all that. And do like us on Facebook and follow us on Google Plus. Thank you so much for watching the video. Bye bye.